This is Guyana, land of many waters and lots and lots of trees. At 83,000 square miles or 21 million hectares, Guyana is about the size of England and inhabited by just 750,000 people. Most live along the coast with the Atlantic, leaving the majority of this vast country uninhabited and covered in tropical rainforest. The thousands of timber species it contains have been virtually untouched over the millennia, resulting in Guyana having one of the lowest deforestation rates in the world. In 2011, it was assessed at just 0.054%. This was determined using the 5-meter satellite imagery analysis. The forested area of Guyana amounts to 18.3 million hectares, providing a forest cover of 85% of the entire country. Even though the harvesting figures and rates are so low, presently only about 150,000 hectares per year, Guyana has a vibrant forest industry, providing direct employment for some 20,000 persons with many spin-off and ancillary industries benefiting as well. With such vast forestry resources and an annual production of just 400,000 cubic meters, there is room for much more productive investment in this sector, and it would be welcomed. Investors should, however, note that the timber industry in Guyana is well regulated and monitored by the Guyana Forestry Commission according to internationally accepted rules and standards. The approach in modern-day forest harvesting is very scientific. It begins with surveys to inventorize the forest and all its resources. Every species of tree in the demarcated area is noted. Then they are carefully measured. As only trees of and above a certain diameter can be cut. Also, only a certain number of cubic meters per block can be harvested. This process ensures that the forest is not denuded of all of a certain species in one area, something that could lead to over-harvesting of that species and the possible extinction of it. When the felling crew has identified a tree for cutting, the tree's fall is plotted and planned to ensure the least amount of damage to it and the surrounding forest environment as it comes down. The fallen tree will then be carefully extracted from the forest again to ensure the least amount of damage to the surroundings. The log is now trucked via timber road to the sawmill, usually located near to a river, so it can provide cheaper transport via pontoon to wood processing factories. In the year 2000, the Guyana Forestry Commission introduced the log tracking system to verify the origin of raw material and to control the level of harvesting within state forests. The log tracking system provides detectable evidence on the legitimacy, location and magnitude of forest operations and is currently applied to all forestry operations including state forests, Amerindian reserves and private properties. Forest produce originating from Guyana and used in any part of the world can be traced back to the source stump of the tree the wood was taken from. The log tracking system is regulated by the use of log tracking tags which are assigned free of charge to all concessionaires and private forest holders who are involved in commercial logging operations. Log tagging is done at the stump where half of the tag is affixed to the stump at the time of felling and the other half, bearing the same sequence of numbers as recorded on the stump tag, is affixed to the produce being conveyed. All logs are tagged, with the timber products tagged in batches. The unique number on the tag indicates who the operator was 
and also makes it possible to indicate the geographic origin of the forest product within the forest estate. It is linked to a quota system, which is an initiative to control the volume of produce harvested. This quota system is applied to both local and foreign operators of logging and sawmilling operations. The initial sawmilling operation is where the value-added process really begins, from the grading of the log, as they arrive in the lumber yard by timber graders who are trained to classify them according to size, species and quality, to the sawmill, where the logs are cut into smaller planks for use in building construction, with some of Guyana's most well-known and world-famous buildings being made of wood from its forests. Red House was built in the 1920s and was home to Guyana's first premier, Dr. Chetty Jagan, who lived there from 1961 to 1964. The St. George's Cathedral, one of the tallest wooden churches in the world at 43.5 meters or 143 feet. It's the seat of the Anglican Church in Guyana. Designed by Sir Arthur Bloomfield, it was opened in 1892 and completed in 1899. These historic buildings are still standing firm today, a testament to the strength and durability of Guyana's timber and timber products. There are many sawmilling operations in Guyana where potential buyers can purchase wood for house construction and interior finishing, and the smaller woodworking operations which produce custom-built wood products for homes and offices. All world-class quality, with a variety of finishes to suit your decor and taste. Regular furniture pieces like beds, desks, cabinets, chairs and stools, and chests of drawers of any design and style can be replicated in Guyana's many species of wood. In all cases, the artisans and craftsmen, carpenters and joiners have developed the skills and techniques necessary to produce sturdy structures in wood, offering many long-lasting products to buyers in Guyana. Some are even considered works of art, entailing many hours of dedicated effort by proud woodworkers. The marquetry technique is being used to produce exciting artistic pictorials in wood. These end-of-the-line wood products from skilled craftsmen in Guyana are bought by tourists and visitors who then take them home to various parts of the world and the climates. The bigger wood processors and manufacturers offer for sale wood that has been kiln dried. Drying the cut to size material is an important stage in the preparation of tropical woods for use in building and construction. The process removes moisture that can cause distortion and encourage termites as time passes. Solar dryers and those that use heat produced by a furnace and blown in by electric fans are equally effective in reducing the moisture content of the wood. Some wood processors use both to ensure the lowest moisture content possible before using the wood in construction. The larger operations also use more mechanized equipment in their processing of wood. Even something as the production of shingles takes time and the use of many pieces of equipment, all adding to the final cost of the item, of course.
but it's all worth the effort and inputs as the finished product is shipped out to buyers who look forward to getting a quality product. Guyana has developed the expertise for producing top quality shingles for both local use and export. And Guyana's shingles have even been awarded International Wood Products Association recognition. Charcoal production in Guyana is growing and it's now being exported. Apart from earning valuable foreign exchange, it helps to improve livelihoods in the smaller communities where it is produced. From offcuts and waste, these finished for market products have been produced for local use and export over the years by Guyanese companies such as Bulk and Timber Works, Variety Woods and Greenheart Limited, Tulsi Passat Limited, and A. Mazzarelli and Sons Limited. There has been foreign investment in Guyana's forestry sector over the years. Recently, the Chinese company Baishan Ling has arrived and is in the process of setting up their operational facilities. They intend to produce both raw materials and value-added wood products for local consumption and international markets as well. The Indian company Vaitarna has recently acquired a concession and also plans setting up a sawmilling operation and is looking at producing value-added and finished for market products as well. Then there is the Barama Company Limited Operation, a company associated with the Samling Group, which came on stream in the early 1990s, producing most of the plywood sold here in Guyana and exporting a substantial amount to markets in the Far East and the Western world. Incidentally, there are different classifications of concessions. Large concessions have a timber sales agreement of 5 to 25 years, above 24,281 hectares, Medium-scale operations have a woodcutting lease of 5 to 10 years and for 24,281 hectares, while small concessions with state forest exploratory permits for 3 years and 8,047 hectares and state forest permits for 2 years and less than 8,047 hectares. While a producer of timber products for construction of all types, Barama is better known in Guyana for its plywood and its production of this specific product has been fine-tuned over 20 years of operation in this field. The process includes the use of specialized automated equipment that cuts the logs to size. Then, peeling the logs produces veneer sheets. Cutting the veneer sheets to size is next. Then they are kiln dried to remove moisture. Consisting of three sheets along with two core sheets, the five plies are sprayed with adhesive, then pressed into contact with each other. A baking process then cures and bonds the adhesive and the wood. It is then cut to size. graded, packed, and dispatched to local and export markets. The entire process ensures that nothing goes to waste, even the remaining cores, 
after the logs have been peeled. These go to the furnace to produce steam for the kiln dryer. Every discussion on Guyana's forestry industry and species starts with its famous hardwoods, and understandably so. The world-famous Greenheart is both internationally renowned and sought after. The docks in Liverpool, England are made of Greenheart, and the boardwalk in New York is made of the other well-known species, Purple Heart, both built many years ago and still standing strong today. While the more commercial hardwoods have always been in demand, and big sellers locally and on international markets, there are many other lesser used species that have comparable properties to the more commercialized species, but have been ignored until now. With both international restrictions and controlled logging coming into play, the Forest Products Development and Marketing Council and the Ghana Forestry Commission have embarked on a program to inform contractors, designers and builders about viable other species that offer great value for money, versatility and durability. Designated the Lesser Utilized Species or LUS for short, their promotion has been a collaborative effort between the Forest Products Development and Marketing Council, the Guyana Forestry Commission and the Forest Products Association. A handbook and reference literature have been made available to potential and existing end users of these other species. It provides vital information on the comparable properties in terms of applications, green density, grain and texture, and heartwood color of the commercially available species. Generally speaking, if the lesser utilized species presently offer tremendous value for money as they are available and in lesser demand, and so are more affordable for use in building projects and house construction. The lesser used species also provide tremendous variety when it comes to applications and are grouped into four classes according to their density. Firstly, there are those species in the heavy category like Burrata, Fukadi and Itiki Borobali and these can be used for marine construction like docks and wharves and underwater applications. Also heavy on land construction like foundation piling, sleepers, building frames, dragline and crane mats, black kakarali, morobakia and tonka bean are even heavier and can be used for very much the same purposes. The medium category species like darina, suya and cowwood are good for floors and ceilings and paneling, joinery, furniture, boxes and crates. Light category species like itabali, kurokai and muniridan can be used to produce moldings, upholstered furniture framing, and utility plywood. The local marine sector is heavily dependent on light but strong wood species for the construction of the boats that traverse the many waterways of Guyana, providing vital communication and transportation links. While the very light species like Dali, Futi, and Duka are appropriate for things like matches, broomsticks, toys, interior joinery, plywood, and blockwood. In Guyana, many of these species are already known by artisans and craftsmen and are utilized in the building sector here, with many houses containing wooden appointments like doors, beautiful staircases, balconies, roofs, floors and walls, cabinets and cupboards. And this publication will help people everywhere make good decisions and save money when building. Guyana is gaining a reputation for the supply of quality prefab houses. These are manufactured in a knockdown form and shipped to overseas markets. Guyana's forest products are exported to the Caribbean, North and South America, Europe, Asia and the Middle East. And the quality of these products is recognized as among the best in the world. And they are also available worldwide at the most competitive prices on the market. If you're interested in investing or doing business with Guyana's forest producers, 
contact the Forest Products Development and Marketing Council of Guyana on telephone number 592-223-5135 or 6. You can fax us on 592-227-5595. You can also email us at marketing at fpdmcgui.org or you can check our website and that's www.fpdmcgui.org. 